I've always loved space and like not knowing what's really out there. And I love the fact that seeing all like millions of stars in the sky really puts into perspective how small and insignificant we are. When a lot of the time, you know, people around you make it seem like the universe revolves around them or it revolves around us as a species. So I think naturally that's what has always drawn me to astrophotography or wanting to get an awesome nighttime photo. In the past, the only other Milky Way shots I've gotten were sort of right time, right place kind of situation. Like, you know, I had my camera on me. Oh, look, you can see it up at the cottage here. I wanted to take the next step and actually plan out the shoot itself. And the planning on its own is absolutely insane. Something you don't even realize how much work goes into until you have to start doing it. Okay, so ideally, we'd like to be, I'd like to be on this point of the lake right here. Because you can see the core of the Milky Way, that big white dot right there is gonna be most visible around 11 p.m. directly across the lake. So if we can get on this side of the lake and shoot from that angle, that's gonna be, that, that might give us a reflection on the water, which would be amazing. There's so many factors to consider when you're shooting astrophotography that it's kind of overwhelming when you think about it all. Like some of the things that I need to take care of for the shoot are, you know, the location. Am I going to be able to see the Milky Way? Um, what direction it's going to be facing? Is the weather going to cooperate? You know, you can have the, the highest probability of seeing the Milky Way, but if it's cloudy, you got zero probability, right? A lot of the times when planning for stuff like this, I find personally that having more is always better than not having enough. I might not use half the stuff I'm bringing, but it would suck to drive all the way out there and need something that I just don't have on me. Obviously, the camera bag, I've got, I'm gonna try the 85 millimeter lens. I don't really need a lot of this stuff. Extra battery. There is a remote timer for time lapses. You've got your Manfrotto tripod, Ronin S, and one more thing I'm gonna bring. This bad boy right here. Inside that little bag is a light wand. Now, I don't know if I'll get any use out of it. I don't know if it'll come into play, but I wanna have it with me in the event that I wanna try some light trails or some, I mean, we're already doing long exposure because we wanna capture those stars, so maybe mixing in those light trails might be another cool feature. Or if I have to film like a talking head segment while we're out there, I wanna be able to have that light because it's gonna be dark out. I can't adjust my ISO to do a talking segment in the pitch black darkness, so that having that extra light might come in handy. Okay, so in theory, the goal is to be there before 10 p.m., scout out the location because I don't know what kind of walk it's gonna be, what kind of distances we're talking about. It's hard to tell via just a satellite view. So I wanna get in position and be ready to shoot by 11 when that Milky Way is really sort of peaking in the direction that we want. So many factors that go into it. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous about it. All right, prep work's done. At the end of the day, there's nothing to it but to do it. So, let's pack it up and let's get the show on the road. See if I can pull this off. See if I've got what it takes. The goal is at the very least to get a really nice Milky Way shot. Like the conditions seem to be perfect for it. Um, I think we can manage that. I'd like to get that at the very least, but I'd also like to get a really cool time lapse. And I figure the two kind of go hand in hand. If you can get a good shot, you just keep the camera in that spot and let it do its thing. If I could change anything going into the next Milky Way shoot, it's pre-planning and pre-scouting. We got there really late at night, only like 15, 20 minutes prior to when I wanted to start shooting. Next time, the biggest change would be to be there even hours before, like you can't be there too early. 
at the rate we're going, we're probably gonna get there at 10.45ish, which is a little bit late because I wanted to get there and be able to scope it out. Um, from when I did the math, the Milky Way kind of looks really good at around 11, 11.15, so I guess we still will be within the limit, but it might be a little bit tight setting up the shot that I want. If I could change anything going into the next Milky Way shoot, it's pre-planning and pre-scouting. We got there really late at night, only like 15, 20 minutes prior to when I wanted to start shooting. Okay, so I, obviously the people at home can't see this, but it's legitimately pitch black outside. The only light is the light from my headlights. And like, even then it's not going anywhere. <laughs> I don't think I would have been able to do this by myself. Like it's terrifying. This is the kind of place where in a horror movie, swamp people start filing out because your car broke down and they eat you. And you, we still have to go another 15 minutes into the blackness. The beauty of it is though, you can see so many more stars than you can, you know, back home an hour and a half away from here. The biggest challenge overall, I would say is not knowing what to expect. So you can plan, you know, from the comfort of your own home and just think about what you want. But then once you're actually physically there, everything changes. All right, so we made it. A couple factors we didn't take into account. Um, people, there's a lot of light pollution from like cars and stuff driving by. So we got to find a spot that caters to staying away from the people. And also there's a lot of trees and, and it's blocking a lot of the view. So. We're kind of just trying to find a place where it's not too bad or if we want to shoot over the trees a little with maybe the bottom of the frame having trees, we're okay, but there are quite a few trees and they are blocking quite a bit. So we want to be looking towards the road. So the best view of the Milky Way should be that way. I don't know how well we're going to see it. Yeah, right about that way, but we're going to have to wait a little bit. we got to wait about 15 minutes, so. I think setting up when it's light out, finding and framing your shot when you have the added benefit of daylight, that's gonna be the biggest game changer and I think that's the biggest mistake I made this time around, something that I will definitely change for the next time. If I'm being completely honest, I'm not entirely satisfied with the results. Um, I think that's my own fault on account of thinking that I planned enough, but not planning enough. I think the results are very cool, but I know for next time what needs to change and you know what needs to be improved. And for anyone at home, I think that's a huge lesson. It's a valuable lesson. If you can take what I've done and check the results, I mean, I'm not perfect. You can always think of and find ways to just be better at what you're doing. So without further ado, here are the results. A time lapse and a couple other shots that I took that, you know what? Didn't turn out too bad, but there's definitely room for improvement. Now, if you guys like what you saw here today, you wanna to try astrophotography, it inspired you in any way, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, comment down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Love ya.